So over the past few months, there's been various situations surrounding the VTubing agency Niji Sanji and their talents. The most recent one obviously being the situation involving Doki Bird, who was blatantly mistreated by the org, leading to a lot of backlash from the community, and rightfully so. This time, however, it involves one of the creators who goes by the name of Luka Kaneshiro. Luka was initially part of Niji Sanji's first wave of male VTubers, and is typically known for his live streams and songs. With all the recent allegations coming to light, it put into question Niji Sanji's motivations with how they treat their streamers, seemingly favoring the the men to the women talent in their organization. Over on Twitter, a user by the name of Razel posted a tweet with a link to a Google Doc titled, My Experience with Luka Kaneshiro. I'm going to go through a lot of the key points in the document and then give my thoughts at the end to get the whole perspective on the situation. It starts by giving some background into their relationship with Luka, stating that they became friends through VRChat and Rolf Gator's 18 plus servo. They would then hang out and become closer friends over a period of time, eventually leading to a very close working relationship. The first point she brings up in her alleged screenshots is some of Luka's disrespect comments surrounding the LGBT community. I'll throw it up on screen now, but it's pretty much just him being horrible and engaging in discussions that should most likely not be occurring in the workplace, especially if this is the kind of response you're going to have towards it. Rezil replies under the screenshot saying he also has a history of being scared of males who identify as gay. He would get freaked out if a male hit on him or if someone joked about him being gay in any way. Underneath, she also leaves a screenshot of him saying that trans and pregnant people make him uncomfortable. Granted, there's no context for the screenshot convo, but it is a pretty weird thing to say regardless. These comments also seem kind of ironic, considering that he would hit on guys pretending to be a woman on Rolf Gator's stream with seemingly no issue. Apparently he would also go on to make sock puppet accounts to harass people during the Niji Sanji audition process. He created two of them which Razel then identified by using the same passwords she had from working with Luca. After this, Razel mentions that he also got banned from NoPixel for sexual harassment. Included is a message from him quoting what they'd said to him after he'd been banned. In the message, it details that he'd been banned for making other players uncomfortable with his RP and making a racially insensitive remark during a ride in the server. One of the more blatant breaches of his contract was when he started using a password protected MMD model of his character. He would go undercover in the Niji Sanji Express train world and eventually the Luxium VR chat world to interact with fans and even reveal he was Luca in disguise. Attached was a screenshot of him admitting that he shouldn't be using it and is the first of many potential breaches to his contract with Niji Sanji. Another part of this was him using copyrighted music without asking for permission. Generally, it's not the worst thing in the world, but because other members have been removed from the org for this very reason, it brings into question Niji Sanji's handling of talent. It seems to imply a lot of favors being thrown around here, with not so much of an explanation as to why. It also seems like hiring her was also a breach of contract, as he was trying to hide it by paying her for work by passing it off as other expenses such as commissions or a birthday gift. She goes on to say that he denied making a contract and wouldn't allow her to send invoices for her work. This is interesting because later on he would do a 180 on this when it came to his taxes, expecting her to create a backlog of invoices for work she had done months prior. Another damning piece of evidence for this document is that he also got her to write the messages for the voice pack for his 2023 birthday. There was also a message and a signature he got her to make for his merch, but he never included a message, so she just ended up having to make it up herself. She also attached the video of her making it in the template I'm assuming Niji Sanji gave to Luka to fill out for himself. Alongside all the previous messages Razel had written, she had also done his handwritten messages for his fans when he hit 1 million subscribers, which he also attaches screenshots showing as well. This is honestly one of the most surreal parts to me. I can't understand why he couldn't even take 5 minutes to just come up with something sincere himself, instead of just trying to pass it off to someone else. Eventually Razel and Lucas's friendship deteriorated until she had to cut him off due to how toxic everything had become for the both of them. At the bottom she also includes two alleged testimonies from two of Lucas's co-workers, which Razel claims is what inspired her to make the document in the first place. The first one reads, Luca has done a lot of bad things, not just to you, so thank you for sharing your experience. The second one says, a lot of people waited for you to tell the truth for a while because it had been an issue, so I'm happy you finally did. She also includes that for their privacy, she won't be naming them publicly or share the full screenshot. So take everything with a grain of salt. Overall, the situation seems pretty damning if everything stated here is entirely true. I'm expecting that Niji Sanji will most likely respond relatively soon since this whole thing is doing the rounds over on YouTube and Twitter. It'll be interesting to see if they hold them to the same standard as the other talents that have been let go in the past, or if they just let the whole thing slide completely. Only time will tell. Anyway, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. If you did enjoy it, feel free to subscribe, and let me know your thoughts on the document down below in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.